Barack Obama and the other lunatics that are in charge of areas of the federal government that issue permits for drilling oil or fracking or for Anwar up in Alaska. These misguided souls, they know, please hear me, the people that are opposing the Keystone Pipeline, they know that money is being used at our gas pump. Money is going to our gas pumps in America, going to the Saudi Arabians, and that money is being used to fund Islamic terrorism. We may never know, but a portion of the money that was used to train, to house, to feed the hijackers of 1911, some of that money came from our own pockets. Wouldn't it be interesting to see the actual 42-year-old woman standing there in Florida or Iowa or New York City pumping gas into her car and you know do a little graph and show the line going all the way back to Saudi Arabia and then coming all the way back to America into the hands of those terrorists writing the check to go to the flight school. Obama is betraying our safety with, with money by refusing to allow us to be independent of the Saudis. John Boehner, Mitch McConnell, both recently, as you know, caved in like a house of cards, left the field of battle like frightened little schoolgirls regarding defunding Obama's executive order regarding illegal immigrants. Obama has, according to the Republicans, has violated the Constitution, gone beyond the rule of law. And what are the Republicans like Boehner and Mitch McConnell doing? Nothing. They, they both just caved in. They both caved in. Why? Why? Is it that they don't have fight in them? Probably. Probably that's part of it. Is it that, is it that they're worn out? I mean, look at Mitch McConnell. He looks, I don't want to be unkind, but he, he, he almost looks like a Weekend at Bernie's. Remember that movie, the guy, the dead guy, they, they propped him up and, I mean, he, he just looks bad. He looks very pasty, he doesn't look healthy. He certainly doesn't have a heart to fight. And that's why he needs to not be in leadership. That's why both of these men need to be on the sidelines and put, put the reins of leadership into some young, aggressive, visionary, ideological hands that will actually fight for the Constitution and fight for how our money is spent. But let's just go a step further for Boehner and McConnell, especially McConnell. They are a part of the moneyed class. The moneyed class, big money, George Soros type money. Mm -hmm. And some of their very wealthy friends who run these huge multi-million, multi-billion dollar businesses what do they want? Well, some of those friends, who, who, by the way, write huge checks, 50, 100,000, $500,000, sometimes seven digits, sometimes a million dollars, write these huge checks to the Republican National Committee, who then turns around and spends it on various candidates. <clears throat> some of those people who are writing these huge checks want to be left alone regarding the federal government and who they're employing. They don't want the hassle. Do you have a green card? Do you have a social security number? So it sets up fraud. So all these people go and they're getting five, six, seven different social security cards, right? These, these illegal aliens are breaking the law so that they can work. And the wealthy don't want to be harassed by the federal government. So they're saying, look, just let Obama's thing stand. Let's get this behind us. We need cheap labor. We need cheap labor in the workforce. And so again, we see the love of money from some of these Mitch McConnell and John Boehner friends. We see the love of money being used against American sovereignty. You know, our, our border has been overrun. All right. All of the discussions of, of amnesty and charity and kindness for these people, they're all valid discussions. But our border has been overrun. We have millions of people who've just poured in. And they've known that they're coming. They have the money to put up a fence and they won't do it. So there's obviously something very ill at play. So when you look at Boehner and then he takes, he takes our money and uses it to fund Obama's illegal amnesty, we again see that money can be covenantal. 
or it can be used for evil. Obviously, Islamic State's use and Al-Qaeda's use of money to murder people in terrorist acts is of a higher grade of evil than the, the, the welcoming of millions of illegal immigrants and onto the socialist plantation, where many of us can now support them. Different grades of evil, but they're evil nonetheless. And we're being betrayed by our leaders because they do not properly use our money. <laughs>I have been a leader in the pro-life movement for 30 years and sadly we have not prevailed in our goal to make it a criminal act to kill an unborn baby. There's reasons why we have failed. I wrote this book, a humble plea, to Catholic bishops, to evangelical clergy and to lay people explaining where we went wrong and what we have to do to prevail. We've made this available as a PDF online for free. I encourage you to go and download your own copy. Why does a nice guy like me keep getting thrown in jail? I have been arrested almost 50 times and spent over a year of my life locked up in various prison facilities. And I wrote a book, many books. In fact, one of them is called Why Does a Nice Guy Like Me Keep Getting Thrown in Jail? It's a theological work, answering those who say that the church should not be involved in politics or that we should retreat. I encourage you to get it. In fact, get one and give it to your pastor.